hey guys and welcome back to pixel cherry ninjas channel today i'm going to talk about the analog pocket i've owned the analog pocket for just over two months so i want to have a look at the pros and the cons and hopefully this will help you decide whether the analog pocket is a device for you is this something you want to buy or is it something you want to avoid so after two months i've had quite a lot of time playing with it different types of games so whether it's an rpg an action game a shooter an adventure i've i've pretty much tried everything even if i've uh, not completed many games on it i've definitely definitely tried many uh, there's a lot of really good stuff on here uh, so yeah let's get into today's video first and foremost you can just boot up your analog pocket if you just want to play a cartridge now i've got street fighter uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival in there. It's the cartridge I just always leave in there. I'm generally playing stuff on the Open FPGA cores, but if you want to just bang in a cartridge and play it, you're good to go. So that is an advantage. And I've tried um, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance cartridges, and I've not had any issues with any cartridges so far. While on the subject of cartridges, I wanted to try a bootleg cartridge. So I bought a bootleg version of the Castlevania double pack, which has um, Harmony of Dissonance and Area of Sorrow. I bought that from AliExpress. It was very cheap. It was like five pounds delivered. So I thought, why not? Let, let's try it out. Because uh, before I got my analog pocket, there was a lot of people talking on the net about their bootlegs not working. Uh, I don't really have many bootlegs, but just I kind of wanted to try one. So I, I grabbed this as I don't have these games original anymore. Um, and I had no issues with it. The bootlegs ran... Uh, absolutely no issues with it they saved i guess whatever the bootleg does it does uh, but it did run uh, now i did i definitely heard of people saying it, it didn't boot up and people were complaining that it's not the same as a game boy because the game boy will play them but the analog pocket won't but in my case the analog pocket played them as as a normal cartridge the filters worked as well one of the greatest things about the analog pocket and one of the best features is the filters, the filters that you can use. I absolutely love the DMG filter. Then you've got the different ones, the Game Boy Light. And I really like this red one and I think it really, really suits Gargoyle's Quest. Uh, so you've got different filters for the Game Boy, uh, the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance. Now, they don't currently work with the Open FPGA cores, but that's something that is inbound when we don't know but they work really well with cartridges um, they also work well with flash cards and what i'm playing this on now they work really well with dot pocket games um, that you're that you're playing using uh, gb studio and while we're uh, while we're still talking about filters let's have a look at some of the game boy color ones so you've got the i really like that one the original game boy color lcd or the kind of vanilla one so that's really nice again this is a dot pocket game and this is something that you can use on original cartridges uh flash carts or dot pocket files um Dot Pocket is something i really really recommend uh, I, I just think it's really really nice and it's very very convenient and while on the subject uh, on filters still let's look at a game boy advance one so you've got analogs filter you've got the original game boy advance lcd um, and you've got the game boy sp screen as well so they're nice to go through i'm undecided about which one i like uh, it varies from game to game some games look better with the analog one some with the sp and some with the original uh, Game Boy Advance one, but it's really nice to have those. Uh, again, this works. This only works on cartridges and flash carts, not open FPGA and dot pocket games. Are only Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. And before we move over to the next section, some uh, open FPGA calls have scan lines implemented. So this is courtesy of Boogerman and this is Anton Gell's uh, slap fight call. So here you go. This is what it looks like vanilla. Just <laughs> zoom it in a bit to see if we can uh, look at it uh, or see it a little bit better. But let's just go all out with the hardest version of the scan lines, which is uh, horizontal and vertical hard. There you go. Uh, again, this is something better used for uh, the dock or a larger screen but there are there and i have been playing around with them um yeah it's, it's just great to have an option I, I know a lot of people have said it looks really nice on a larger screen it's not something uh, at least these scan lines are not something i would use on on a handheld but some people uh, may like them uh, so if you do uh, have your analog pocket or it's something you want to get definitely play around with these options it's just really nice uh, to have them on here okay so one of the greatest things is 
having access to open FPGA cores. Uh, absolutely brilliant. We've got stuff like Amiga. Now I went, I went through this entire list uh, just to show you guys what we've got. Each arcade game pretty much is a separate core. Unless it's an arcade system like CPS1, there is lots of developer interest. There's lots of development for open FPGA. Um, just even today, just before doing this video, um, you know, there's a, there's like a early, early version of a PlayStation one core, which many thought wasn't possible, but the screen on this thing, uh, the screen on this thing is fantastic. So we've got open FPGA cores, uh, as well as I just want to talk about the screen. The screen is just fantastic. I mean, look at it over there. I, I hope my, my, my phone recording can do it justice. I uh, absolutely love the menus. I love how it looks. Um, one thing to point out as well. So I've got a lot of modded Game Boys, which I was quite happy with. But one thing that I did notice when I was playing Castlevania on my Game Boy Advance games, it feels more responsive on an analog pocket than it did on those screens, which I think were kind of uh, uh, old BlackBerry screens that were reused, uh, you know, were given a new lease of life as Game Boy or as Game Boy screen. So definitely, the, the screen is very, very responsive. It's very, very bright. It's very, very good. Um, and just while we're just looking at all the different Open FPGA cores, there's too many. So I'm just going to kind of skip to the end there, where, we, where we're just going to go through a list which is uh, grouped by type of system. Okay, it's going to go really, really fast. They're just going to flick through like the amount of cores that we've got. We've got so many arcade ones. We've got computer ones. We've got console handhelds. There are many, many. There's so much developer interest in the analog pocket and there's just more and more cores coming out. The Wonders one was released recently, which I think is just absolutely fantastic. But so many open FPGA cores, it's, it's amazing. So one thing you have access to as well which you'll have access to via an emulator or a Game Boy as well but um, these these things here have been converted to dot pocket files so I've got a variety of Game Boy and Game Boy Color games it doesn't do Game Boy Advance but it does Game Boy very very well what we're looking at here is fan games and ROM hacks so here is a fan game uh, and I've actually it's released as a Game Boy ROM a Game Boy DMG ROM but also as a dot pocket um, file which just runs through gb studio on your analog pocket so this is elden ring it's it's it has quite quite decent decent novelty value to check out and i recommend you guys check it out it is a lot of fun it's free you can get a lot of these games from places like itch.io uh, i end up getting a lot of dot pocket games from there uh, there are other like new games that are coming out for the game boy as well and a lot of those games when you purchase those uh, you get them in dot pocket form as well which we're we're going to look at one now called in the dark okay so in the dark is a game that's been released very very recently it's a puzzle game banging soundtrack and uh, just a nice kind of story about it as well looks really really good you can run this on a game boy dmg i actually ran it on a dmg and it looks really nice on my actual dmg you can run it on a game boy color or like i am here i'm running it as a dot pocket file which picks it up as a game boy color games it's it's a simple puzzle game uh but it's it's new uh the guys that are making this are actually making a physical release as well. So if you want to expand your collection, you can. But, you know, these are some nice things you can play. Now, the last thing we are going to go and have a look at is uh, a ROM hack of uh, Metroid. So this is Metroid 2, which is the color version of the game. Now, these aren't exclusive to the analog pocket. It's just nice to be able to play these on the analog pocket. Uh, one other thing, I've got the stats on there, but I just have them on there as I do a lot of videos. I just kind of like to look at the stats, especially when I'm testing a preview core or something and I'm checking it out just to see everything is OK up there, more so with um, the, the display and the hertz. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this is like um, a Metroid 2. It's done in colour and honestly this looks so much better than the original. Uh, I didn't play the original because a lot of stuff I played originally I still like it with a green screen uh, but I played this after and uh, I like the way it looks. So you know these are some really really cool things to check out on your analog pocket. Okay so one thing on here the multiplayer works really, really well. Here's just a small demonstration. I've tried different varieties of multiplayer. I've done a video on it earlier, but I've tried more since now. Uh, I've tried the open FPGA cores, and I've tried I've tried them analog pocket to analog pocket, and they work really, really well. I had a blast playing Samurai Showdown 
uh, the DMG version with a friend of mine when it, when he popped over. It was it was a lot of fun. It was like we were kids again. Um, the Game Boy like Open FPGA to a Game Boy and a cartridge like the variations just work. So Open FPGA works, cartridges work, and flash carts work for multiplayer. So you can mix and match that combo anywhere. So you can run a flash cart on your analog pocket. You can run a cartridge on your Game Boy vice versa. Uh, you can run open FPGA on your analog pocket and run a flash cart or an actual cartridge on your Game Boy. Over here I'm actually doing it with a cartridge. The Tetris cartridge is in my analog pocket and in the Game Boy I'm using a flash cart. Uh, so it works really really well. One thing to be mindful for is when you get a cable it needs to go in a little bit deeper in the analog pocket so you'll find some of the cables you have there might not work so you can either trim them i actually bought another cable um, now the game boy color one i've got works really really well and the game boy advance one I, I bought is temperamental but it works really well i just need to get another cable source another cable because i want to play i want to play street fight i want to see my friend uh, just uh you know just a two-player game of that messing about but honestly it's it's brilliant it works absolutely, absolutely. It works like a dream, like better than I expected. Definitely, definitely check out this element. So here's a little something. Now, before I got my analog pocket, uh, I remember lots and lots of posts on Reddit and other places on the net saying that the power or, you know, the sleep wake button, it was, um, it was people kept hitting it by accident and it was flush with the unit and i'm trying to get that as best as i can on camera i don't know if analog have made a revision i can't confirm that there's whenever i post anything about that on online people always get passionate saying no it's the same one uh but people have said that their buttons flush like i'm trying to get it on camera as best as i can there uh, but my button is not flush like if i run my finger on it i can feel I can feel that I can feel the little the raise there of the button and I have not once pressed it by accident. I'd be interested if you're like a person that got an analog pocket very, very early on. Is your is your button completely flush? Because I've only ever seen two analog pockets, which is mine and my friends. Uh, we both got ours around the same time. I think he got mine like two or three. He got his, sorry, uh, two or three weeks after I got mine. Uh, but my button is not flush. Uh, not once have I pressed it by accident. Uh, so yeah, that's that's definitely good there. Whether it's a design improvement or I can't confirm that, but based on everything that was online, where people said no, um, we kept pressing it by accident and it's flush. Did that my button is definitely definitely not flush. So I guess that's an an improvement if there was one. Before we move over to any negatives, I just wanted to mention the last positives about this. Things that I think that are very very good about this so the battery life the battery life on this thing it's ginormous uh, i've i've used it for a big part of the day and it's been nowhere near ending um so you will get a full day's play out of this you can pretty much play it all day now i haven't tested it i haven't run a test i haven't you know left it running and put a timer next to it but it is more than adequate like it runs it runs long i, I don't charge mine for days and days um uh, it just runs it runs really really well um the other thing is most flash carts i've tried in fact all the flash carts i've tried work on it uh, i even found like a super card which is a really crap one from years and years ago in an old game boy and that actually works on it the only one that I had issue with was the easy flash junior so the easy flash which is for the game boy and the game boy color that for some reason doesn't work on my analog pocket i haven't got another one to test whether that's just an issue with that actual flash cart but that's the only one that 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 didn't work for me compatibility overall is absolutely um brilliant and another positive thing if you uh, if you've got one then you probably already know if you don't then you want to use it and if you're going to get one uh, there's updaters out there's updaters out that make getting everything very very easy it literally does everything for you and they're very very easy to use now there's three out there i've only tried two of them i keep meaning to try the third one at some point but there's pocket sync and there is pocket updater both of these are really really good they kind of get everything for you so all the arcade cores literally the press of a button uh point it to the directory or to your sd card or to the analog analog pocket if you've got connect got it connected via usb cable and honestly it will grab everything for you it'll grab all the cores for you the only thing that you may need to do is put on some roms uh, but yeah, pretty much everything else is done. So it's it's very, very good. Uh, they've streamlined it. They've 
you know, the community have made it really, really good. The Analog Pocket community is, is amazing. Just the work the developers are doing. Uh, PC Engine CD is inbound. The PlayStation uh, has started very, very infancy and, and may not may not ever really fully happen, but it's very, very interesting to see. We've had the Neo Geo released recently, uh, an update for it. Amiga Core um, hard drive support is inbound. So there is lots and lots to uh, like on this device. But now we'll uh, move over to the negatives, which I'm happy to say it isn't actually going to be that long. So let's move over to uh, the cons. Okay, so moving on to the negatives. Now, guys, there's not many negatives. The biggest negative I have, or the biggest con about the analog pocket is the D-pad. Uh, now, I know some people are okay with it. I'm okay with it to some extent. Like, I like Mario World on it. I can play fine. I can play Castlevania games on it fine. Uh, obviously, stuff like Zelda and Pokemon, fine. Issues that I'm having. Now, someone pointed this out in the comments of my previous video where I tested out the controls. And one thing that I missed or I didn't check was actually shooters. Now, in shooters, when you're moving around, you try and do circular motions. I'm trying to do those circular motions and I'm I am just ending up with a square and I'm I'm trying to get it. Now, in order to do those circular motions or get the diagonals and get like that kind of fluid movement, you you really really have to try and and it's difficult it's not natural so effectively you've got a great fpga handheld gaming console but the controls they, they, they're just not as good as the rest of the machine the controls could have been so much better the d-pad the, the could could have been like a vita style d-pad it could have been like the 8-bit though m30 d-pad which is based on the mega drive uh, six button controller it's just that it's i i don't even know how to best kind of compare it it's it's just such a letdown you've got such a great device and it's let down by controls now again i'm not saying like i i love the device there's a lot that i play on it and i don't feel any issues with the controls but when i'm playing street fighter and i'm trying to jump forward sometimes i'll just jump straight up i'm not having the issues that uh, early adopters posted which was when they're moving it down they're accidentally getting a diagonal i've never accidentally got a diagonal the only thing that i've got is sometimes when i try and do a diagonal i'll get either just a straight up or down uh so that's that's my biggest that's my biggest gripe with it so just another couple of things which are in the cons uh one is the LNR buttons. They're not that great. If you're trying to play like a six button game, like a six button action game, let's say you're trying to play Street Fighter. Yeah, those buttons, they're, they're, they're not very comfortable to use. It might just be me and my big hands, but generally uh, I don't like them for anything more than just, I don't know, bringing up a status screen or something. So the LNR aren't great, but again, it's not something, I'm not really playing Street Fighter games uh, on there. So it's not posing a big issue, but if you do want to use them and you want to use them like quickly yeah they're, they're not great but they're not they're not a deal breaker again and the kind of final thing is the long wait if you want to try and get one of these things it took me 11 months uh, people can make babies quicker so if you order it off analog directly the lead time is like a year uh, if you go on eBay, then you're going to pay scalper prices. This cost me in pounds. It cost me 250 pounds, roughly. It cost me about 200 for the unit with delivery and around another 50 pounds for the VAT, the tax. Now, if you're buying it off eBay, I I've seen them go for 350 cheapest, around 400 and even higher sometimes. So, you know, if you do want to get one and it, this is something that appeals to you, then just put the order in with analog, forget about it, play some other games, and uh, eventually it will turn up. So guys, in conclusion, is it worth getting an analog pocket? Yes or no? I, I would have to say yes. It's, it's a great machine, as long as it's something that serves your use case. Uh, like I said in the intro, if you're a casual gamer, like like my brother, he can't tell the difference between gameplay on an Ambernic and this. And for those people, it's not worth spending the money on that. If you are someone that's very sensitive to latency um, and you want you want cycle accurate gameplay, then grab the Analog Pocket. It's, it's a great device. There's so much out for it already and there's so much more coming out. So yeah, that's really it. The main bad thing, like I pointed out, was the D-pad. If it just had a better D-pad, it would be perfect. I don't even mind the LNR button so much because most of the games I'm playing are kind of going to be like four buttons or less. So I'm I'm good with that. There's a lot of calls coming uh, just earlier today. Uh, the PlayStation Core, like an early, early version of it has been released. So things are looking good for the analog pocket. And uh, I would recommend if you're if you're thinking about it or you're worth thinking about it, it might just be worth putting in that order and just 
waiting for your unit to arrive but that really is it guys um if you enjoyed the content then a subscription and a like is super appreciated if you want to be notified when i release new content a lot of it is fpga content sometimes i just do a random stream of games turn on those bell notifications but uh thank you for your time i'll see you guys in the next video pixel cherry ninja out